Hello, my friend. It is finally here. My James Charles Morphe palette, everything you need to know video. I've been working on this for a month and I finally compiled all of the information that I think you need to know before you buy this palette. So if you feel like you need that in your life, you need that information, I'm gonna give it to you right now. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the palette, we're gonna be talking about what you get, we're gonna be talking about price, we're gonna be talking about value, we're gonna be talking about ingredients. I've got dupes for you, I've got a demo of how I got this look today, we're gonna to do a wear test, it's all in here. But before we get started, I do wanna let you know that I am not a Morphe affiliate, and uh, I do know James very casually, I, we've talked a few times on Twitter DMs, but he would never call me if he had a problem, I'd never call him if I had a problem. There really isn't a personal connection it's more of a business acquaintanceship because we are in, I guess you would say, the same industry. So that being said, let's go into the cruelty-free status of the brand, which is Morphe. Morphe has said that they are cruelty-free. I did get some information from the website Cruelty Free Kitty, which is seen as a reliable source for cruelty-free information. Morphe says that they don't test their finished products or, or ingredients on animals. They also say their suppliers don't test on animals. They have no third parties that test on animals. They do not sell in China where animal testing is required. And they they are a private company. Do, they don't have a parent company that may test on animals. It's just them. So according to Cruelty Free Kitty and probably the vast majority of people who are cruelty free, they you would probably say that Morphe is a cruelty free brand. This palette was launched on November 13th and it quickly sold out. Well, not quickly, but it sold out by the end of the day in the US. I did hear that internationally it sold out much faster. There was a brush set that was launched alongside. The brush set also sold out around the same time as the palette on that day. The next day it launched at all Ulta stores because Morphe is sold at Ulta and it did sell out at Ulta as well. Since then it was restocked on November 23rd at Ulta, sold out, restocked at Morphe on December 6th, also sold out, then restocked at Ulta on December 16th, again sold out. So this has been a very popular release. There is some brand controversy in part of what I just said in that Morphe sells things out and they restock very quickly. So uh, for me personally, I believe it is a marketing technique to make something seem of high demand that it's going to sell out, that that will increase sales overall, that they're not actually sold out but they're just being held out <laughs> so that it seems like there's more of a demand. It is possible that Morphe gets a shipment in and then they have another shipment on the way that is already in process. I mean, that is possible, but there's no way that they're completely sold out of the manufactured products and then be able to turn them back in, you know, three weeks later. It's just not possible. They could have some rounds of them coming, I don't know, but that's something that they've been accused of is kind of not shady business practices, but more of, marketing techniques that may not be 100% truthful to what is actually happening, if that makes sense. Any other controversies related to Morphe, I will in the video description put some links that I find to be interesting about those controversies. James Charles, who is, his name is on this palette. He is a very popular YouTube influencer and also on Instagram. He's got over 10 million followers on both platforms. He also has some controversies under his belt at his young 19 years old. What he's mostly critiqued for uh, is his uh, attitude, I guess you could say, toward um, people like, the, people believe that he's very pompous, uh, is the general consensus of people that aren't fans of James Charles, based on some interactions that he's had with influencers, based on some of the tweets that he's put out, some things that he's said in videos. He's also been accused of not being truthful in lots of ways. He admitted that part of how he got a following on Instagram was lying about which brands he was using in order for the brand to repost him. Also, he uh, got a lot of exposure by being on Ellen for a ring light photo that there is some evidence to suggest that that ring light photo, a uh, high school photo was all faked and it was photoshopped and it wasn't real. Those are some controversies about Morphe and James Charles himself. If you'd like to know more about it, I will be linking those in the video description so you can read more. Now let's talk about the value of this palette. It is $39 plus shipping. Morphe has a ton of discount codes, as you may know, for 10% off. 
off. So you can use one of those in order to purchase this palette when it does come back in stock. So when I purchased it, I did get $3.90 off using a 10% discount code, which brought it to $35.10. And then I paid $5.95 for shipping. So for me, this cost me $41.05. In here, you get a ton of product. It's kind of ridiculous. You get 75.7 grams of product, which is a lot of product, which makes it 52 cents per gram. And even at the drugstore, you are not going to find 52 cents per gram unless you are at the Dollar Tree or possibly even Wet n Wild Shadows. I didn't do a comparison, but I think even Wet n Wild Shadows are more expensive per gram than this palette. So this is extremely, extremely inexpensive. I just found my Jaclyn Hill palette. It had been missing for a while. It was in a box with some other palettes and I misplaced it and I'm so thankful that I found it for today's video. So this is 56.2 grams. So you're gonna get 20 more grams of product in the James Charles palette than you did in the original Jaclyn Hill palette. And believe it or not, I actually paid about a dollar more with shipping for the Jaclyn Hill palette than I did for the James Charles palette. So really and truly, price-wise, you're getting an excellent deal on this palette if it's something that you end up enjoying, which we're gonna get into in a minute. So what are you getting for your $41.05? You are getting a palette that's bigger than my head and you are getting a ton of eyeshadows. You are getting a lot of warm toned, more natural looking colors, and then you are getting some brights down here. You also got some brights up here as well. Lots of bright everywhere, but there are definitely enough shades in here where you could get a more natural, wearable look for work or school or whatever. There's a mix of matte matte and metallic shades in here in both the more natural section and the brighter color section. A lot of people have asked me what I think of James Charles' signature on here. I don't care. <laughs> I honestly don't care. If you saw my signature, there's like maybe five legible letters in my entire signature and my last name is Long. So I don't care that it's missing a letter, you know, or that it doesn't, I don't care. I just don't care. That's, that's my personal opinion. <laughs> So at this point, I know that some of you have been waiting for my swatch comparisons of other eyeshadow palettes in my collection. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you those dupes of all 39 shades right now. All right, as Pop Lux would say, it's swatching time. He does it way better than I do. All right, this is the Morphe James Charles palette. And these are the shades and we're about to dupe the heck out of this palette. I spent hours going through my collection trying to find dupe shades for you and I have found quite a bit. So let's go ahead and get started because we've got 39 of these babies to do. Okay, so let me tell you what's going on here. So during finding all these swatches, my arm got a little irritated. So I decided to shave the top of my arm so that I could still get you beautiful swatches with my right hand. <laughs> and then um, just be able to use a different part of my arm. The other thing I wanna let you know about these swatches is that I am double dipping in the pan for every swatch. The reason why I wanna do this is because I really want you to be able to see the shades for each one. The first shade is always going to be the James Charles palette and then the rest are going to be from other palettes in my collection. If a palette didn't have at least two shades that were dupes for the James Charles palette, I didn't include it in this video. You may see things slightly different on your screen than I do in person, but I am I'm gonna tell you what I see in person as far as the closest dupes. These two right here are definitely the closest to me. This is from the Juvia's Place Magic palette. And then this one here is Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's from the Norvina palette and it's called Base. These are the closest dupes I found for Ring Light. And ironically, the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette, this is the shade Beam. I find that this one looks to be the closest out of my collection. These all are a little bit pink. This one's a little bit dark. Uh, so really, Jaclyn Hill beam is the closest dupe. So Good is described as a true metallic gold, and I didn't have as many dupes for this as I thought that I would. The closest are actually from the Laura Lee Cat's Pajamas palette, and this is the shade Scatterbrain, and then the new Tarte Pro Remix palette, and the shade is called Moonlit. Now we have our neon matte orange called 518, I've been told. No exact dupes. I do have a shimmer version from BH Cosmetics, their Galaxy Chic palette, but the closest one, again, is a Laura Lee palette. This is from the Party Animal palette. I just want to reiterate real quick the way that I'm swatching these. I am going once into the pan, swipe, 
Second into the pan, swipe again for every single shade, no more, no less. Here is Rusted. And again, no exact dupes. I feel like Rusted is just a little more orange than these, but these are pretty close from Urban Decay and Juvia's Place. This is the shade Halloween, and I was actually really excited about this, and then I realized how many dupes I have for it. It's kind of crazy. And what's even crazier is that the closest dupe, in my opinion, is Firework from the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette. I do want to note, though, that this one does seem a little bit creamier. I don't know how to describe it, almost like, a, like more dimensional methicone -y. like it's just got more of a slip to it than the James Charles formula, but the shade is almost identical. The next closest one is from the Sola Look Grease Palette. And again, you may be seeing things slightly different than what I'm seeing just because of the difference between a camera and real life. Now here is Wig. No exact dupes here because Wig has a little bit of a green, olivey kind of undertone. Colored Rain's Nightingale is very similar, but it's a lot darker. I would say the next closest one is Laura Lee's Au Natural from her Nudie Patootie palette. I don't think this one is as close as the other ones from her Morphe palette because it doesn't have as much of that olive undertone. All right, this is the shade. T and I do feel that the closest dupe is actually from Juvia's Place. This is from the Warrior palette. And the next closest is probably Central Park. And this is from the Jaclyn Hill Favorites Morphe palette, but you can see that they are slightly different. There's a little bit more warmth than the Jaclyn Hill version. Okay, punch me. I don't, I don't get Punch Me as a reference. Maybe you can explain it to me if you're more of a James Charles fan than I am because I don't get that name. Uh, but really no exact dupes. I think the closest one is this one here. That's Raw Sienna from the Modern Renaissance palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. But the pigmentation is much stronger. It's a little bit deeper. The others don't quite fit. And everything else I found in my collection was just too dark or it wasn't cool toned, mustardy looking enough. It's funny how, you know, you think that something looks so ordinary, but then I just couldn't find something that was exactly the same. James describes Sister as a shimmer rose gold. Lots of dupey kinds of shades here. Of course, some of them don't exactly match, but I wanted to show them to you anyway, because they are kind of close. The one from the Grease palette by Solo Look is pretty close. It's just a little bit pinker. The Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance Vermeer looks really, really close, along with the Jaclyn Hill shade from her Morphe palette. Really close there. It's just, again, just a tiny bit pinker. I think James is just a little bit peacher, but they could definitely be used for the same purpose. And they're they're really, really close. I would say closer though with the ABH Modern Renaissance shade. This is Mary. It's a matte, dusty rose. And I actually had no dupes in my collection for this. I had ones that were a little lighter, ones that were a little darker, ones a little redder, ones a little pinker, but nothing that looked exactly like this. So that's pretty cool to have something that's unique to my collection. That doesn't happen very often. This is another really fun shade. Uh, I think that the closest one is probably from Solo Look. It's just a little bit brighter, a little bit more, I guess, red toned. And then the one from Juvia's Place is also kind of close. It's just a little more muted. This one isn't really a dupe, but I threw it in there because at the time when I was practice watching, it looked like it was a dupe, but it's really not. This one, I love this part in James's video and he was like, I just wanted a red. How hard is it to make a red? <laughs> well, apparently kind of hard. I actually don't own uh, anything that's an exact dupe. The closest one I have is from Juvia's Place. It's just a little bit more pink and I was surprised the one from Sua Beauty from the Cupcakes and Monsters palette wasn't more red. It's actually more orange than James. He definitely got more of a true red than either one. Good job, James. Now, Shook is a beautiful shade, but it's also highly dupable. <laughs> There's lots and lots of shades that look very similar. I mean, you could pick, take your pick of these, except for maybe the one from BH Cosmetics. I mean, they're all pretty much the same stinking shade, including the one from the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. This is the shade Cran Apple. Here is Boutique. It's a matte maroon. And honestly, I feel like any of these could be used for the same purpose. I think the closest one is the one from the Laura Lee Cat's Pajamas palette, but they're all pretty stinking close. I don't know, the Manny MUA Lunar Beauty one's kind of close too. Benny was also harder to dupe than I expected. Most of these are actually Kat Von D eyeshadows. The closest one is actually from the long since gone Mi Vita Loca palette by Kat Von D. It was limited edition. But yeah, I think it was the kind of the purple undertone of this and how deep it is that really made it difficult because a lot of the browns that are this deep are more warm toned. And even the cool toned ones like these here don't have that purple undertone. Starting off row three, we have flashback and these are just pure 
white shades. A lot of my shades that are white have a tint of pink, a tint of yellow, a tint of something. <laughs> These are my only pure white shades and they're all pure white. They could all be exchanged for each other. I feel like the Sufa Beauty one definitely, well, let me blend a little bit. Yeah, it's probably the most opaque of all of them, but they're all pretty much the same. Face is surprisingly my favorite shade in the palette. It's creamy, it's bold, it's bright, it's shiny, it makes me happy. <laughs> but I do have some dupes for it. I would say the closest dupes in here are probably this shade and this shade. This one is from Juvia's Place, which is also a very creamy, poppy formula. And then this one is from the Too Faced Gingerbread palette. But nothing that is exactly the same, but a lot of them it could be used for the exact same purpose. Here's another one I couldn't find a dupe for, and this is Tune. It's just like this yellowy, buttery shade and I had nothing that was exactly the same. Again, some lighter, some darker, some more orange, some more yellow, but nothing that was this exact shade. This one is called Code James and honestly I feel like a lot of these are pretty interchangeable, especially these two here. And then of course this one's from Juvia's Place again. <laughs> Seems like lots of Ju Juvia's Place dupes. And then this one's from the Nicole Concilio palette by Violet Voss. Here's 10% off and honestly I feel like the closest dupe is the Jaclyn Hill Roxanne shade. Uh, next closest is probably the Nicole Concilio Violet Voss shade, but the rest of them could probably be used for the same purpose, but they're not as dupey as the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette. Next up, we have No Beans, and I do think that there are a couple of really close dupe shades in here. I think this one is the closest here. Again, from the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette, this is called Chip. Also pretty close from the ABH Norvina palette and surprisingly from the Too Faced Original Chocolate Bar palette. Not surprisingly, Spooky is the one that I have the most dupes for because it's just a matte black and they all kind of look like matte blacks. I don't know, is any one of those more similar than another? I mean, I think on the eye, they're all gonna look pretty much exactly the same, except for the one from the Emily Edit Wands palette. That one has just a tiny bit of shimmer in it. All right, here we have B. I feel like the one from Suva Beauty, the Cupcakes and Monsters palette is definitely the closest. And I do think that the Lunar Beauty one is kind of close. I feel like on camera, it looks more orange than it does to me. It's a little more of a bright yellow in person than in camera. Guac is one of the shades I was most excited about in the palette and I really have no exact dupes. The close one's probably the one from the Emily Edit Wands palette. I really, really love this shade. This is one of my favorite shades of all time, but really, really love this. This is gorgeous. I didn't think I was gonna have any trouble duping this one. Well, <laughs> it proved me wrong. The closest one is definitely from Coastal Scents. This is from a palette called the Summer Breeze palette. And uh, yeah, the rest of them, these are too frosty, those are too green. I don't know, I figured I'd show you anyway, just in case though. What makes this a little more unique is the fact that it's matte. I have a bunch of shades that are very similar, but they're shimmer. These are the only matte bright blues that I have, and I feel like any of them could be interchanged with the one from the James Charles palette. If you can just ignore that one, I'm trying not to wash my arm <laughs> as much as possible because it's starting to hurt, um, but I don't think I have a dupe for Brother exactly. It's got a little more purple in it than these, but if you're looking for a bright blue, there's definitely other options. I honestly didn't think I had a shot at duping this one. <laughs> now looking at this one in the camera, this one definitely doesn't look like a dupe at all. I think I'm gonna delete this one from my record, but this one right here from the Wanderlust Perfusion palette is pretty stinking close. I mean, I'm, I'm shocked. And I honestly wouldn't be sad if I never saw a dupe of this in my collection again. It's a very difficult shade to work with. It's definitely my least favorite in the palette. This shade was also really difficult to dupe. I think the closest one is from the Too Faced Gingerbread Spice palette. Uh, the rest are either too dark or too purple or too pink. <laughs> there, this was a hard one to do. Pinkity drinkity, you can barely see on my skin tone. I did swatch this one three times just to try to get the opacity so you could see it. I have no dupes in my collection for this. I wish that it had a little bit more white base to it so that it would really pop. Um, this may look better on someone with a different skin tone, but it's just, it doesn't pop and I have nothing like it. And I wish I did because it really is a cool shade. Social Blade is a really fun shade. I wish I had more dupes for it, but the closest one that I have is from Coastal Scents, that Summer Breeze palette. This is another one that I thought I was gonna be able to dupe, but I couldn't really. Uh, most of the shades that I had that were similar to this were shimmer instead of matte. So yeah, those are the closest that I've got.
I really, really love Cape Cod. <laughs> Closest shade I have is actually from the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette of all palettes. It's just a tad, tad bit greener, but it's very, very close. Here is Cola and no dupes in my collection for that one as well. Lots of almost dupes for acapella, uh, very close. Closest one that I do have, I think, is the Nicole Concilio one from Violet Voss. The rest, I'm sure, could pass for it. And just a moment for Cheers to the Beauty's uh, opulence. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. I had some shimmery purples that were closer to this one, uh, and it's not a dupe, but it's kind of close. Two more shades left, and then we'll do some palette comparisons, and then we'll get back to the rest of the video. The closest one for this shade is probably the one from Suva Beauty from the Cupcakes and Monsters palette. This one's just a little too cool, and this one's just a little too dark. Last one, we've got Skip and Bright pink's been done before, and I've got a few of them. It's very, very, very bright pink, but definitely dupable. All right, so now we are going to look at whole palettes and palettes that have a lot in common with the James Charles palette. So we're starting with Juvia's Place Masquerade. These are the shades that they have in common. There are a couple that are shimmer in Masquerade, but they're matte in the James Charles palette. By the way, the James Charles palette will always be in the top during this segment, and the dupe palette will be on the bottom. This is the Juvia's Place Nubian 2 palette, and... These are the closest shades that match up. I did include a couple of extra ones that aren't dupes, but they're kind of close, could be used for similar purposes. But then this one could, isn't really a dupe and could be used for similar purposes. Got the new TARDIS Pro Remix for you. And then here are the dupes. So some of them obviously aren't exact dupes. And like, for example, these two, this one uh, from James Charles palette is a matte. The one from the Remix is a shimmer. These aren't close really. I don't know why I didn't put these in as dupes earlier because they definitely could be. And then the James Charles again here is matte where the one from the remix is shimmer. This is a newer palette by Profusion. It's called Wanderlust. So this is a drugstore brand. I believe they sell it at Target if you've never seen it before. I do have a full review on Profusion Cosmetics, but not this particular palette. This came after that and I couldn't help but notice there's quite a few dupes. Not as many as I thought there would be, but there are quite a few. This one is different in that, of course, again, we've got a matte and a shimmer, but other than that, I think they're pretty close. This is the Suva Beauty Cupcakes and Monsters palette. You can see there are definitely some differences. For this shade here, this is actually a mix of two shades from James's palette. This is a mix of Social Blade and Sugar Daddy. No, not Sugar Daddy, just Daddy. And then that's straight from Cupcakes and Monsters to kind of make it match. Um, but overall, I mean, they're pretty good dupes. A little bit of difference in the yellow, but other than that, pretty good. This is a classic bright palette, the Urban Decay Electric Palette. It looks like that. And here are all of the dupes and dupish shades. Again, some matte, some shimmer. But overall, I mean, there's a lot of similarities. This was one I was surprised to find so many dupes in. This is the Violet Voss Nicole Concilio palette. And there's a couple things I need to show you. So this is ring light swatched twice with two different shades from Nicole's palette. You can see this one's a little too light. This one's a little too dark, but I wanted to show you both. This is chocolate from Nicole's palette. And these are two different shades from James's palette. So it really matches better with this one. But because I showed you this one earlier, I just wanted to show you that. This palette was the first palette by Lunar Beauty called Life's a Drag, and it looks like that. And here are all of the dupes. I was surprised at how many there were. Like, that's most of the Life's a Drag palette that you can dupe in the James Charles palette. And I'm not saying this is intentional. Don't twist my words. I'm not saying it's intentional. It's just, you know, you, I mean, there's only so many colors you can make. Uh, that's all I can say. I don't know why anybody does what they do, <laughs> but but yeah, you can't deny. There are a lot of colors that look very, very similar. And finally, the one that I've been waiting to show you, I saved it the, for last, the most interesting to me, another Morphe palette, but this one by Jaclyn Hill. This was her original favorites launch, and here are all the dupes, ladies and gentlemen. Honestly, like I feel like all of these are pretty much spot on dupes, except for Pool Party and whatever that one's called from James. That's one called, that one's called Hello. That's the only one that's really not a dupe. Um, the rest are pretty stinking spot on. I, I don't know. Oh wait, no, this one right here. These two are not uh, exact dupes, but man, they look really, really similar. 
All right, so now that we're done with swatches, let's go ahead back to the rest of the video. I've got more information to share with you. So you have now seen the swatch comparisons. We've gone over the palette as a whole. We've talked about value. I'd like to talk about application for a bit. And before I show you how I got this look today, which I feel was one of my most successful applications of this eyeshadow palette, I do want to show you some of my fails. And if you know me, you know that I am not a makeup artist. I've never claimed to be a makeup artist. I don't I don't have an inner artist to unleash is what it comes down to. I, I don't have that in me. Every bit of artistic skill I have, I feel is learned through practice and repetition and not through anything that is intuitive within my soul. I have no inner artist. I searched for her. She does not exist. So I do want to show you my fails because I know I'm not the one, only one out there looking at this palette wanting to try it that doesn't have an artistic bone in her whole body or his whole body. So here are some of my fails. On the left side of your screen, it was kind of inspired by a look that I saw on Instagram, but and I think that it was mildly successful. It's just, I think my glitter application skills were not very good. Much less blending ability happening on the right-hand side of your screen. I figured with the color wheel, I could mix the blues and the greens together and did not meet with success there, as you can clearly see. There's another shot of it. You can see I'm not very happy about it. So I wiped that off and I tried again. I do feel like the look you see on the left-hand side, that one wasn't terrible. It was fine, but I still felt like I couldn't get those mattes on in my crease and on my transition area blended very nicely. It was very difficult. I also feel like the color on the right-hand side of your screen, now the purple look, it just wasn't blending the way I wanted it to blend. All of these were applied over the MAC Paint Pot, which was it recommended by by James and it just was not working out. The next time I tried to play with this palette, I decided to go off of Instagram and just look at photos of animals and get some inspiration from there. So this is a toucan, and now this is the look that I call Unleash Your Inner Toucan. And there uh, apparently is not an inner toucan inside of me. Uh, it looks atrocious. It did not go well. No, that was that's a big no. Now here's a lion, and we're gonna go ahead and try to unleash our inner lion. Uh, this one I felt like was a little bit better. <laughs> not too terrible, tried to do kind of a cut crease situation there. And not, not too happy with that one either. I thought it would be fun to try to add a little bit of black to kind of accentuate some of the black in the lion. And this is actually done with the black that's in James's palette on a very fine pointed brush. And it actually, the lion actually turned out pretty good. Application skills, not so good, but at least I tried. And then the very last attempt that evening was Unleash Your Inner Parrot. And again, not atrocious, but still not, well, yeah, kind of atrocious, not, not very good, but the blending wasn't as bad with this. I was struggling and struggling and struggling. So I did end up contacting James and kind of being like, hey, I've got some questions for Morphe and I'm having trouble with this palette. And we talked for about, I don't know, 20 to 30 minutes while he was on a plane somewhere and bored. And he gave me a bunch of advice for using the eyeshadow palette. And he also gave me a contact at Morphe to ask my questions, which we'll get into later. If you have seen some of his tips that he's talked about with this palette, he says that it only works with certain eyeshadow primers. So he's recommended the MAC Paint Pot. There's another eyeshadow primer that's become really popular that I'll put the name right here. I can't remember what it is, but that one's become very popular that he said it works very well with. So this is the thing though, is I don't want to buy an eyeshadow palette. This is, Morphe is a lower cost product. I don't wanna have to buy a MAC Paint Pot to go with it. So for the look today, what I decided to do was I did put the MAC Paint Pot on this side, but then on the other side, I have the CoverGirl Lid Lockup on this side. So you can see how it applies over a drugstore eyeshadow primer. He did say that it's much better than using it over concealer. When I talked to him on Twitter, he did say you can use the Tarte Shape Tape with it, but you don't want to set it because this is what's happening, is that when you put the eyeshadows on your eyes, you want to go from darkest to lightest. That's really, really important because once you set the color down, you can't really put anything else over top of it and change that color super high maintenance for me, at least. I am not used to working with an eyeshadow palette that requires that much thinking ahead of time of what order I'm putting the shadows down. He said that that primer is important because it, it, the pigments need something to stick to and that's the primer. The pigments can't stick to each other. 
And that was the problem I was having with the blending is that I was trying to get the pigments to mix with each other and it just wasn't happening. So you have to keep that in mind when you're applying this palette, that the application technique is very different. And he did talk about that in his launch video that you do have to figure out how to work with the pigments. So now all of that being said, now I'm going to go ahead and show you how I got this look today, starting right now. ingredient analysis. And the big question that I was curious about when I saw this palette launch was like, I want to get my hands on that ingredient list because I want to see how close this formula is to the Jaclyn Hill formula. I want to know how close it is to the original and the vault. I want to see how close it is to that 35A palette that this was kind of inspired by, I guess. I, I needed to know. So I've got a chart for you. Of course, I had to make you a chart. I've got the eyeshadow palette that we're talking about today listed over on the left-hand side. The James Charles and Morphe palette has two different formulas. There are the eyeshadows and then there are the pressed pigments. We're gonna get into the details of the pigments and the not eye safeness in just a minute, but let's just talk about them, comparing them next to each other. So the way that I've broken down my chart is that I list the ingredients, the way they're listed on the packaging from the most concentrated down to the least concentrated. I do not have the pigments listed here. We're going to talk about those in a minute. So the first five are green, second five are yellow, then we've got orange and we've got pink. So you can see there are quite a few comparisons between the eyeshadows in James's palette and the pigments in James's palette. James mentioned in his video that pigments are just that. They are pigment pressed. That is actually not true. I believe him that Morphe told him that, but I do not believe that to be true because there are a ton of other ingredients in the palette. And I did ask Morphe that question, which which again, I'll mention later. So let's go ahead and open up the rest of the chart and you'll notice that the ingredients are very, very different in the rest of the Morphe line. If you look at the Jaclyn Hill favorites and the Jaclyn Hill vault, there's a lot of similarities there. One thing that's really weird that's a little bit off topic is that for the favorites palette, they do have quite a few of the main ingredients in the palette that are in a lot of the other palettes as a may or may not contain, which is kind of odd. But if you add those in as that they are somewhere inside of the 
palette, you'll see the two Jaclyn Hill formulas are actually quite similar to one another, and they are the most similar formulas in comparison to the James Charles palettes. If you look at the rest of the Morphe formulas, they're more similar to each other, but they are not similar to the Jaclyn Hill or the James Charles. But again, I wanna stress that there still are significant differences between the James Charles formula and the Jaclyn Hill formula. And the James Charles formula is a totally new animal. So now that we've gone over the chart, let's talk about ingredients of note that you may wanna know about, especially if you have sensitivities. So it is a mica and talc based product. There is ethahexyl palmitate in there that some people are sensitive to, and some people do not use palm oil derivatives in any of their products because of environmental reasons. The preservative is phenoxyethanol, which some people are sensitive to. There are no parabens. I did do an entire video on the pigments within this palette, so definitely watch that if you wanna go further into this than what I'm going into today. There are a couple of pigments that you need to know about. Some people like to tap eyeshadows onto their lips for like a fun, cool effect. I do not recommend that with this eyeshadow palette because some of the eyeshadows in here and pressed pigments are, they contain ultramarines and or chromium oxide greens, and those are not FDA approved for use on the lips. So I would not recommend that. There's also bismuth oxychloride in here, and that is a pigment that is very irritating to some people. It's a kind of, uh, it's kind of a scratchy pigment. So if you have very sensitive eyes, bismuth oxychloride is one you definitely want to watch out for in the ingredient list. And if you have eye irritation, see if it has that in there. And if it does, that may be your problem. Definitely talk to your doctor about it. Another one I want to talk about is Red 40, because there is some mixed information about Red 40. Red 40, according to this particular chart that I'm going to show you now from the FDA, is considered eye safe. Uh, uh, most red pigments are not, but Red 40 is. I know that there, there's been information out there about Red 40 not being eye safe. Red 40 is listed in the eyeshadow section of James's palette and also the pigment section, which are, they say, not eye safe. So I, I do believe that Red 40 is eye safe, but that being said, Red 40 is known to stain the eyes. It is also known to cause irritation in some people. The big pigments that you want to look at if you are looking for an eye safe by the FDA eyeshadow product are Red 6, Red 7, Red 27, and Red 33. And this is the thing that I'm not sure if I explained very well in my other video, is that the staining thing is not my big issue. That is, I, I mean, staining Staining goes away. The woman, Cody, who was in the beginning of the video, that was seemed like it was her big issue. What I was more concerned about was if she was getting hives. I don't know if she was getting hives. I don't know anything about hives. I'm not a doctor. I don't know. It's much more complicated than just, well, you should know that red eyeshadow stain and that now it's not an issue. No, that's not what I'm talking. And for me, if the FDA says don't do something, that's something that I need to take seriously, at least for a minute and consider it before I dismiss it. You know what I'm saying? So now I want to talk to you a little bit about the questions that I asked Morphe and what their answers were. The big thing I wanted to know was how much pigment was was actually in these shadows. Because in James's video, he had said that the pigments were just that, their pigments pressed. But then you had all these other ingredients in there, so I was wondering about that. What, uh, my first question has to do with that, and it has to do with the listing of ingredients. So when you see an ingredient list for a cosmetic product, you'll see all of the ingredients starting with the most concentrated, going down to the least concentrated, except for once it passes the 1% of the total product mark. Once it gets to less than 1% of the entire product, then they can list it in any order. Now, after that, then you'll see the pigments. So I was wondering, if the pigments are always listed last, is it possible that the pigments consist of more than 1% of the entire product? So this is what Morphe says. While we cannot discuss the exact percentages of each ingredient, that's proprietary Morphe and James Charles info, we can con confirm that the ingredients are listed in order of volume on each product. Okay. After that, today, as I was doing my final research before filming this video, I found this on the FDA website. I'll put it on the screen for you. Color additives of any concentration may be listed in any order after the listing of the ingredients, which are not color additives. So yes, according to the FDA, this is what I was looking for from Morphe, but I couldn't find it on the FDA website. I found it. Yes, the pigments can be more than 1% of the entire product and still be listed lower on the ingredient list. So we don't know how much actual pigment is in these eyeshadows because 
That's information just from Morphe and James Charles, according to Morphe. Now, this was interesting. Another reason why I had asked that first question was because of my second question. My second question was based on a part of Morphe's website that I found that is no longer there. It stated that pressed eyeshadow pigments deliver all the rich color payoff with none of the inconvenience or mess. Made with over 80% pure pigment, these shades deliver intense shimmer, multi-dimensional shine. So I asked them, is this the distinction between eyeshadow and pigment within the palette? Is it 80% pigment like you say on your website? Part of the reason why I was wondering that is because some of these red pigments, the likelihood of irritation and problems with them increases the higher concentration they are. So that was one of the reasons why I wanted to know because I care about your eyeballs. It's what it comes down to. And I care about my own eyeballs too. So this is what they said. The info you shared regarding pressed eyeshadow pigments all pertain to discontinued products. And we're so glad you brought this old content to our attention. We've taken it down immediately. Sorry for the confusion. So that is not correct according to their currently available products. I don't know which ones they applied to. They didn't tell me, but apparently it applied at some point doesn't apply anymore according to them. Now, this is the big question. See, I, I, I was trying to ease them in, easing them in. Connecting those first two. If the pigments do in fact compose 80% of the product, does this mean that, those, that these other ingredients are simply used in a smaller quantity than in the eyeshadow formula? I was trying to find out if what James was saying was true. If the pressed pigments do have 80% pigment and the eyeshadows have less pigment, and that's the, is that the difference between a pigment and an eyeshadow? That's what I wanted to know. And they completely dodged <laughs> my question, completely dodged it. I'll put it up on the screen for you. You can read it for yourself. I'll give you the highlights. Basically, they're like, they gave me the spiel on the not eye safe part. They talk about how these pigments are eye safe in Canada, Ireland, and Australia, and the United Kingdom and the European Union, which is very true. But these are noted as pressed pigments on the box. And then, of course, they. I feel like this one has been sent out multiple times because then they use, use them to create a killer highlight or rock a totally original look. Get creative, have fun, and blend the rules. Are you kidding me? Are we in professional land here or are we in marketing land? Because the marketing is not going to work on me. I'm sorry, it's just not. So they didn't answer my question there, but they basically said none your business was the answer. That's the answer to all my questions is none your business. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I know that was very long, but I'm the ingredient person, you know? Like, uh, who else is gonna tell you all this stuff if it's not me? Hopefully you did find it helpful. Hopefully I did it justice, and now it's time for me to go. We're gonna go, and we're gonna come back late tonight. It is currently, what time is it? It is currently four o'clock, but I put on this eyeshadow about 2.45. So we're gonna be back after I put my kids to bed, probably around 11 o'clock, and see how this eyeshadow wore for the day. Let me just show you now that it's been on my eyes for about an hour and a half or so. I am getting some transfer of the shimmer up into my crease. That is normal for me. That does happen with most foiled eyeshadows at this point. If for a long time it didn't, right lately it has has been over the past six months or so. So I don't blame the Morphe palette for that. That's just what all foil shadows are doing on me. But I really wanna see, especially whether this cover girl is going to hold on to these pigments as much as the MAC paint pot is. Because if you don't have to buy a paint pot to make this palette work, I think that's better. If you don't want a paint pot, I don't think you should have to buy it. That's my opinion, but we're gonna find out. You're gonna find out in a couple seconds. I'm gonna find out in about eight hours, so I'll see you then. Hello, my friend. It has been about seven and a half hours since I put this makeup on. Let's go ahead and zoom in and check the wear time on the James Charles Morphe palettes. Here we go. Okay, so as you can see, the transferring has gotten much worse, but again, like I was mentioning, that is more typical of foiled eyeshadows and metallic eyeshadows lately on me. I've tried glitter glue to stop it. I've tried all kinds of things to try to stop it from doing that. Uh, concealer is something I need to start playing with just a little bit more, but I knew not to do concealer with this eyeshadow palette because I've been warned it's a little bit harder and I wanted to take the easier route. One thing is speaking of the base that I use, one thing I noticed is that the MAC side and the CoverGirl side both look pretty much the same to me. I am getting a little bit of creasing on both sides. There's a little bit of patchiness here and there, but overall, unless you're looking really closely, 
they look pretty good, I feel. I feel like this will last you through a good solid work or school day. Um, I have worn this multiple times at this point, and every time I've used the prep method that James recommended, everything has gone well as far as lasting power. As far as my final thoughts on this palette, okay, there's definitely going to be people that are going to love this palette, get excellent use out of it, and be very happy with it. But I do feel like there is a market of people that are not going to enjoy this, and I happen to fit into that market. And the reason why I don't think this palette is for me is because I don't have the patience for a palette like this. I would much rather spend $40 on an eye, on like an Anastasia eyeshadow palette, I'd rather spend $45 on that that I find easier to use. I'd rather buy a Too Faced eyeshadow palette for a similar cost than this, even though you get a lot less product. The ease of use is more important to me. Juvia's Place eyeshadows are also excellent. They're easier to use and they're at a similar price point. They are like a dollar per gram, a dollar fifty per gram, which is still really inexpensive. I like to be able to take colors and be able to have them blend together easily. I don't like to have to follow a bunch of rules in order to make something work. That's just me. My hair is going nuts. <laughs> So I don't think this palette is for people like me who don't necessarily have an inner artist to unleash. I don't think I'm the target market. Also, this is a really, really big palette. If you don't want to store something this big, of course this is not going to be for you. If you don't wear a lot of bright colors and you already own a lot of these shades, this isn't going to be for you. I do appreciate a lot about this palette. I appreciate the center row a lot. My absolute favorite shade, well one of my favorite shades in here is this one right here, which I don't know what it's called because the uh, names aren't on the palette. They're on this goofy little sheet and I don't like goofy little sheets, but I will lay it on top and I will go with it the way that it's supposed to be and it's upside down, so let's flip it around. The shade Face. Love this, and I actually love this as a highlighter shade as well. Really fantastic job on that shade. I also really love the green that I used today. Just a wonderful shade. I like these guys up here. I mostly have been digging on the foiledish kinds of shades. Uh, the blues are really, really nice. Another thing I figured out is that if you use these shades with other eyeshadow palettes, they tend to work better than they do with each other. I don't know why, I have no reasoning, but, but if you did buy this, Take that into consideration that you may be able to pair this with other palettes and have better luck and maybe not have to follow so many rules with it. The people that I think that this is definitely for is exactly who it's marketed to. Those that want to unleash their inner artist. People that are looking to create Instagram kinds of looks with bright colors, with you know a mix of all of this and doing something fun. I'm gonna put up some photos of some of my favorite people <laughs> and favorite looks that they have created with this palette. I mean, just some amazing, gorgeous, Instagrammable looks with this palette are possible. It's just, that's just not me. And if it's you, this is an extremely inexpensive per gram price to to pay for something just to play with as a toy and to enjoy and experiment with makeup artistry in the true sense of an art. The only thing is, is that you know, yes, it's a great value per gram, but at the same time, you are still paying over forty dollars for this, including shipping. So. You know, this is something that you would want to have to use a lot for it to be worth the value of it. If you're only going to use it every once in a while, it's not really worth the value if you think about how much you get. Because you're not going to really care about the price per gram because you're never going to hit pan. So you have to take that into consideration as well. So overall for me, this was not a win for me unfortunately because I just don't think I'm the target market for it. But I hope that I gave you enough information in this video so that you can decide whether you're the target market or not. Because because that's my goal is not just to tell you what I think about something but whether you know give you enough information so you can decide whether it's good for you and that's your cue it's time for you to chime in in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness where we help each other not to buy crap and to buy things that are totally worth it down in the comments down below it's your turn to chime in on the James Charles Morphe palette especially if you have bought this if you have tried this I would love to know your thoughts what's your skill level what are you using this for are you 
using it for everyday kinds of looks? Do you like using the bright colors or are you more of a neutral person? Are you someone that does Instagram kinds of looks? Are you finding success with that? Are you frustrated by it? Do you find it easy to use? I need to know these things the community wants to know. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video and thank you for your patience. I was waiting quite a while on those answers for Morphe and I did not want to film this video without those answers and I'm so glad that I waited because then I got to talk to James and I got to get all of this together for you and there's a reason why it took me a month and I hope that you understand that. I hope you saw that in the content of the video. So thank you again for your patience. Thanks for being here. Mad love to you and I will see you in a video very, very soon.